welcome to my channel ginger here i was going through some old paintings and found a watercolor piece i made two decades ago this video is about transforming this old painting from this to this and i'll make the change using faber castell's albrecht durer watercolor pencils someone told me i shouldn't touch my old paintings because they give people a reference point that helps them to see how i developed as an artist through the years in a way that's true but when i look at my old paintings sometimes i cringe at how ugly they look it makes me wonder what i was thinking when i was painting them however when i analyze again these old paintings I realize how my techniques have evolved. But then again, this watercolor painting I'm restoring right now, this just needs to be reworked. To be honest, I can't stand the neon pink everywhere. Like, what? This glaring pink here feels like it's glowing in the dark. I can't stand it. That has to go. So it might have been the fad in the 90s. Who knows? But it doesn't look cool right now. This watercolor cityscape, it was from my 1998 collection. As far as I can remember, I only used a cheap student grade watercolor pan set and there was nothing special with my materials. Even the watercolor paper was not the best. You might be wondering, what's my point in doing this? Like, what's my point in making a video about a painting makeover? Of course, it's cool to see the before and after pictures, which I'll show you later on. But more than that, what I really want to talk about is the kind of transformation that happens when we live through hard times in our lives. I want to share with you in a kind of graphic way how God also restores us through our brokenness. Let's admit it, we are ugly too. Just like my old painting here, there's ugliness in us too. There's something inside of us that also needs a fresh scrubbing of color. So friends, while you're watching my hands work through this urban scene, please stay with me and listen to my story. It's a true story of a very brave woman I know. I want her to stay anonymous, so for the sake of my story, let's just call her Ella. Now, Ella got married late in life to a handsome man. He's a God-fearing man. Their marriage was a match made in heaven. Both of them had strong faith even when they had to go through a lot of difficulties in life. And you see, Ella conceived a beautiful girl and being a doctor, my friend knew how to mind her health more than any average person. She and her husband did everything medically possible to provide the best care for the baby. But shortly after the baby was born, things just went downhill. Doctors couldn't figure out what was going on, but despite the many interventions, the baby's health just started to fail. Family and friends continued to pray, and because of the struggle, more people joined in the prayers, and before we knew it, the couple's first child became everybody's sweetheart. So it came as devastating news to everyone that the baby died a few days after birth. She was the first child and the last child of this beautiful couple, so you can imagine how painful it was that God took the baby away. No one could blame them if they decided to turn their hearts against God, right? But the most amazing thing is, this couple became even more devoted to the Lord, even through their grief. This experience brings to mind one of the famous stories in the Bible, in the book of Daniel when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow to the golden image, which the king ordered everyone to worship. This was King uh, Nebuchadnezzar we're talking about, the king of Babylon. He was the one who gave the order for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be dumped inside the fiery furnace. Now, can you imagine getting cremated alive? It was no joke. It was a scary threat. Anyone who would give in without a second thought. But these three men, they didn't budge. In, in the book of Daniel, you can read what they said. They said, if you throw us into the blazing furnace, then the God we serve is able to rescue us from a furnace of blazing fire and release us from your power, your majesty. But even if he does not, O king, you can be sure that we still will not serve your gods. 
see how fearless they were these three men sort of made bold claims here they were kind of reckless by saying something like hey king you can burn us in the fire however way you want or however long you want to roast us it's okay it's it doesn't matter because our god is able to save us that's what these men were trying to say which was shocking in itself but the shock didn't end there they went a step further in their faith. They had the boldness to also say, but even if God does not save us, we are okay with it. Even if God doesn't show up and come through for us, we are okay. We, we will still not bow to your idols. We will still worship the Lord. We won't take this against him. That statement right there is one of the sharpest statements written in the Bible. Even if he does not rescue us, you can be sure that we will still not serve your gods. Even if God does not, that, my friend, is a phrase that packs a punch. And you know what? Because of that courage, Nebuchadnezzar got so mad that he ordered the heat of the furnace to be turned up seven times more. Imagine that. Baking at 200 degrees can already burn your cookies. Imagine cooking at 1,400 degrees I did a bit of research and I found out that the lit side of a cigarette is about 750 degrees Fahrenheit already. A typical flame is about 1,100 degrees. Can you picture what it was like for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Anyone in their situation could easily turn against God and worship the golden idol. Because the furnace was so hot, and the soldiers who brought the men closer to the furnace died right away. It was that hot. You'd get more than just a heat stroke by standing there. Now, why am I sharing this? Friends, let me ask you. When was the last time you got thrown into a furnace? When life has dealt you a hard blow, when things aren't going your way, when sickness has crippled you, or maybe you lost a job or a loved one, when bad things happen to you, can you tell God with the same boldness? Can you say, even if you don't rescue me, Lord, I will still love you? Can you say that? Let's be honest for a second. It's hard, isn't it? That small phrase, even if you don't, it's packed with power. That kind of prayer, my friend Ella said when she lost her baby to an unknown disease. That's what Ella said. And with that fragile daughter in her arms, her tiny body was still warm, although she was already dead. My friend was able to still say, Lord, even if you took my only child away from me, even if it hurt so bad, I will still serve you. And that's what her life has been ever since. Faithful, strong, prayerful, solid in faith. Friends, our lives have a lot of moments like these. Moments when God didn't pull through even with our most intense prayers. Moments when He didn't heal or He didn't give the dream job we wished for. Or when He didn't save the child from the accident we hope she'd never encounter. If you ask me why God allowed these things, I have no answer to you. Our understanding as humans is just so limited. Even the best of us can't figure the mind of God. But I do know one thing, when God permits pain to penetrate our lives, He's painting a better picture. God is painting a better picture each time we're broken and thrown into the fire. God is not satisfied with how our current picture looks like. It's in the same way with my painting here. It's imperfect and needs further work. Our souls also need work. Our character needs more scrubbing and burnishing and retouching until the colors pop out. It may be hard for you to believe it, but we actually become flat one-dimensional people uh, if life is so happy and easygoing. That will make us boring, spoiled brats. But brokenness, that's a different story. Suffering is what makes us authentic. It's a cross that makes us wise and deep. And so God wants to throw us enough times into the fire until we too can boldly say, Even if you don't, O Lord, I will still. Friends, thank you for joining me in another episode of Our That Place and Praise. This is Ginger, always praying with you. Let's keep the faith together until we meet again. Thank you.